In the first video of this series, we will demonstrate the assembly of the printer that we will be upgrading. There are several reasons behind this choice. Firstly, I want to ensure that we are all on the same page when we begin the upgrade process. Just follow along and you'll be able to simply replicate my actions when it comes time to remove or replace components. It would be easier to create a video starting with a disassembled printer because that is what you'll see. We'll be upgrading everything except the frame, the power supply unit, and the heating bed with its MOSFET. As you might be aware, Anycubic has recently released the new Cobra Max 2. When I initially began recording this series, there were rumors circulating about this upcoming printer. However, it's worth noting that it is now available for pre-order. I've examined the specifications of the Cobra Max 2, and I must admit I'm quite impressed. This series will also seek to address a fundamental question. Is it more advantageous to upgrade an existing Cobra Max, or would it be wiser to simply invest in the new Cobra Max 2? I attempted to contact Anycubic and asked them to send me a Cobra Max 2 for the final test, comparing a fully modded Cobra Max with a stock Cobra Max 2. However, it seems they are not particularly interested, at least for now. I'm optimistic that this situation could change if there's enough interest from the community, and subscribing to the channel will certainly contribute to that effort. One more reason behind creating this video is to provide an overview of the series itself. Firstly, I'd like to emphasize that upgrading your printer not only enhances its speed and functionality, but also significantly boosts your understanding of how a 3D printer operates. However, it's essential to note that if you encounter any difficulties during the upgrade process, Reaching out to any cubic support may not be a viable option as they may not offer assistance. Moreover, there's a chance that performing these upgrades may void your warranty. To address these challenges, I've established a Discord server. Given the lack of potential support from any cubic, I strongly recommend joining our server as soon as possible. You can pause the video and become a part of our community now. On Discord, Everyone has the opportunity to share their experiences, insights, and upgrade suggestions, which allows you to benefit from the shared community expertise. Now is also a great moment for you to subscribe to the channel. Just click on the bell icon. This way you won't miss any of the future series uploads. Now let's delve into the components we'll be utilizing in this video. Our primary focus will be on the Big Tree Tech BTT board specifically the SKR3 model. I've opted for the SKR3 board for a specific reason. It comes with five-stepper driver slots. The significance of having five-stepper drivers becomes apparent when we consider the Z-axis. With this setup, we can independently control the two motors on the Z-axis. This enables us to fine-tune and calibrate them to ensure minimal height differences between them and the heating bed. This precision alignment makes the printing process significantly easier. In contrast, the Stoke board only provides four stepper drivers and shares one for both Z-axis motors. This limitation prompted our choice for the SKR3 board as most alternative options also only offer four stepper driver slots. So to summarize, the primary reason for selecting this board is its five stepper drivers. These greatly contribute to achieving an accurate first layer. When initiating a new print, we'll utilize a function called Z-Tilt to calculate and minimize any differences between the two Z-axis. In addition to the boards, we'll also be using stepper drivers, specifically the TMC2209 model. Initially, I considered using the TMC2240 stepper drivers, but I already had the TMC2209s on hand, and they just happened to be the most popular choice. So we'll be going with the TMC2209 stepper drivers for this project. Now let's discuss the firmware aspect of this upgrade. The stock firmware on the printer is Marlin, but we'll be replacing it with Clipper. To install Clipper, you'll need an external device such as a computer or a Raspberry Pi. Speaking of which, a Raspberry Pi is a critical requirement, and if you can get your hands on a Raspberry Pi for Model B with around 4G Glide of RAM, that would be the ideal choice. 
You'll also need a micro SD card for the Raspberry Pi, which fits into the Pi itself. I understand that there may be shortages of the Raspberry Pi devices in some countries, while others may have a more abundant supply. Nevertheless, you'll need one to complete this upgrade. In this series, we'll also be addressing the rewiring of the machine. This entails crimping the cables ourselves and creating new wiring configurations that enhance the safety of the printer. Lastly, let's talk about the Hotend, which is a component you can choose based on your printing requirements and preferences. You don't have to select the same one I'm using, but if you're interested, I'll be working with the Hamera Revo Hotend. In the upcoming video, we'll be disassembling the printer. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and be sure to join our Discord server. Staying connected through Discord will be invaluable in ensuring that you follow the correct steps throughout this process. Enjoy the remainder of the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.